With every home he builds, John Houston prays its occupants will have what he did not, a loving, intact family. John's parents split when he was 11. Soon he was living alone with his brother. So how did he manage to find his way home? Take a look. John Houston is the founder of a custom home company, as well as five more related businesses in the Dallas-Fort Worth area. Though John's enjoyed great success, he's also known extreme hardship. When he was 11, his parents divorced, leaving him and an older brother on their own. John has learned to see God's fingerprints even in the rough times of his life and explains how we all can in finding my way home. John Houston joins us now, and we welcome you, John, to the program. It's good to have you with us today. Thank you. Very glad to be here. You mention in your book that your parents divorced when you were just 11. Did you have any idea that was going to happen? We didn't. We'd actually never seen our parents fight, so it, it quickly changed our life. And I was 11 and my brother was 15. And it, it got really chaotic for a while, but once we, my brother started a landscaping company and we moved into doing that, it really just became normal life and we really didn't know the difference. Uh, your parents gave you the option to choose who you wanted to live with. Your sister went with your mother, you and your brother went with your father. That, that didn't last long. He remarried and he and his new wife moved out and just left you guys there. I, I, what is astonishing to me was the work ethic you guys had. I mean, up at the crack of dawn, working before you went to school in the morning, doing yard work, coming home, working again until it was time to go to bed. What were those years like for you with no adult supervision? Yeah, you know, looking back on it, I think the Lord that my dad and my mom had taught us great work ethic. Um, but it, it really was a time where we would get up early in the morning, uh, load the trucks up. Um, my brother, we would mow till school started. My brother would drop me off at school. He would go to school and then pick me up afterwards and we would mow till dark. Um, and honestly, it just became part of our life. And I, I think what I, looking back on it, what I learned is, is that sometimes those things that are crazy and chaotic actually just become our norm and we don't actually even recognize that it's not normal until we get older. Yeah, God really provided for you along the way too. I'm not talking about financially so much as just encouragement and inclusion. I mean, you had neighbors and people who looked out for you. And um, at, at one point, I mean, your now in-laws actually took you into their house when you were in high school yep. and you lived with them. Talk a little bit about your mom's death, because you had, as, as devastating as this divorce scenario was, you've had other things along the way that really challenged your faith. Yeah, that one, that was probably one of the most challenging, chaotic times in my life. And I, I just want to encourage all of the viewers that, I mean, we all have hard times in our life. We all have tragedy. So I want you guys to know that I'm very sensitive to that. And I know they're all different, but I know tragedy uh, it, it can really impact our life in a positive or a negative way. And so looking back on that, you know, when my mom committed suicide, I was actually in Bible college. Um, and my business teachers actually said, Hey, you know, you go take care of whatever you need to take care of. My Bible teachers actually said, Hey, if you miss more than two of my classes, you're going to have to drop the class. So with, with that kind of love, the, the, these Bible teachers were showing me on top of a lot of Christians actually calling and telling me, Hey, I can't believe your mom went to hell uh, because she committed suicide. It just really, it really just began to impact my life. And I was like, man, God, if this is how your people love, and this is how you love. I don't want to have anything to do with you. So I walked away from the Lord for over a year. Um, but really, a lot of it was my in-laws, uh, the ones that had taken me in and just how they continued to love me where I was. Um, and just really unconditionally. And over that year that I walked away from the Lord, them doing that, I finally just said, OK, because they, they did ask me to go to church. And I finally went to church. And it was that day I was sitting there. Couldn't tell you what the pastor said. But I remember him saying, son, I've given you your time to mourn. Um, and I really want to teach you my love. Are you going to follow me or not? 
And it was that day that I really dedicated my life to the Lord. Yeah. And I say that was really the day that I really got to begin to know God's love. So it was coming on the backside of a lot of this tra uh, tragedy, a lot of the heartache where I could actually reflect back and begin to see that God was always with me yeah. all the way through that journey. You know, if one of the things I noticed about you throughout your life is that you remain teachable, that you were always open to the voice of God, to the encouragement of other people. Years later, as a dad, you faced a challenge with your own son. How did God teach you in that scenario? You know, because I didn't grow up with family, I didn't grow up with a, uh, a home, you know, I didn't really know what that was like. And so my life, I had learned how to live and check the right boxes, the Christian boxes. I'm reading the word, I'm praying, uh, doing the things that I should do, going to church. church. But what, what the Lord really started doing in me was he actually showed me that I was actually a condemning, manipulating father and husband. And that just rocked my whole world. And so as I began to really understand that, the Lord said, hey, I'm revealing that to you because I love you. But I also want you to know it's also because you still don't really understand and know my love, the love of a father. Uh, and it really radically changed my life. Uh, and honestly, that's the same thing I tell my kids today is that, man, 1 Corinthians 13 says, without love, it's all meaningless. And so that's what I constantly have to remind myself of. I can do all these things. I can accomplish all these things. But if I don't do it with love and the love of Christ, then it's all meaningless. Well, your book is a powerful testimony to God's response to us when we're willing to let him teach us. You can read more of John's story in his new book. It's called Finding My Way Home. It's in stores, stores nationwide, a great encouragement to people who want to build loving Christian homes. John, thank you so much. Great to have you with us today. Thank you, Terry. I really appreciate it.